And when I saw the opening to your show, you know, being from San Francisco, I was like, oh my God, that's, that looks like it's right near Chinatown. You know, <laughs> this photo is and I was like, that's insane. Where did you guys shoot that? In South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> It is such an honor to meet you, even though it's through Zoom, but the work that you do speaking as well on your father's philosophy is is truly inspiring. I was able to oh. listen to one of your TED Talks um, about your father's philosophy, and I found that so intriguing. You know, growing up in San Francisco, born and raised in San Francisco, he was, he was certainly one of my idols. And just for the past Asian American um, Pacific Islander Heritage Month. He was my choice as, uh, as a hometown hero. So oh. I'm very familiar with his work, but also someone that I truly respect. And so it is such oh. an honor to meet you and for you to carry <laughs> on that legacy. Oh, well, my goodness. Thank you. Very kind. And I'm glad that you, I mean, obviously everybody knows the name Bruce Lee, but you know that you have a personal connection to him and that, and that oh. he is a hometown hero is wonderful and have this conversation with you know someone as as talented and out there in the world and representing as you are so thank you nice to meet you nice to meet you <laughs> and just to like just to jump off on that topic you know going back and listening to more of his interviews realizing that he wasn't just like a pop star icon mm -hmm. um and a superstar he was an activist you know, he made it a point not to take roles that diminished being an Asian man. And so he certainly yeah. didn't take any roles to like stereotypical roles. And like, I'm, I wish I was that brave early on <laughs> in my career. You know, I <laughs> oh wish I God. did the same thing. But, yeah. you know, yeah. starting in this career, like over 10 years ago, I was like, any opportunity is great. You know, starting off as an extra, I was like, any Asian representation is good representation. But you know, I was wrong. Like it's, mm -hmm. you know, for a while it was just being like the token Asian person. Like they're just filling their diversity quota and not really diving deep into the stories of being of, of Asian Americans versus just having you in the background as like, yeah, token Asian person. You know, I acted in my twenties and, and I was the same way. It was, it was just like, Oh, a job. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> you know so I get it it's like it's like and, and what you say is true like that it takes courage to say no a lot of the time mm -hmm. yeah. and, to and to stand up for yourself and I often think that because he was a fighter right like he was a martial artist he was engaged in combat he was engaged in a very physical form of standing for oneself right and and when you when you get in the ring, um, you have to deal with with some very serious emotions in the face of being attacked, right? And so, and so I often think that that training um, helped him immensely in that regard. Speaking of the work that you are doing, you're also trained in his <laughs> form of fighting, and you went to school for singing, music, you, like, yeah, yeah classically trained, which is incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. But with that experience, you've you've kicked off your own show that you executive produced. You know, you have a great team behind you. Like, what was that whole process like? Of like, I mean, this is something that he's been. You know, he had pitched originally in 1970, Warrior, and he's he was like so ahead of his time because I have not, I've yet to see an Asian storyline that takes place in like the Wild West. You know, yeah. like during the Industrial Revolution, during like the golden years of California when there was like, you know, the, the gold rush in California or like even after that. But I mean, it's so crazy. Like how did you decide to finally make the story now? You're on season two, but. I mean, you know, it was really in a lot of ways, as you say, like um, Justin Lin was a huge part of it. I, I always knew that this story existed, that this treatment existed. And I knew the history of my father's involvement, mm -hmm. but I didn't, um, and, and I wanted always to make projects around my father, but it's very, it was, it has been very challenging for me because I don't want to just make projects for projects sake. I want to make projects that feel right, that are right, that represent my father, that represent, you know, um, 
your Asian family. culture, my family, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm not taken seriously a lot of the time as a producer or as a creative or as, you know, I'm treated like a rights holder. Like, oh, you have something that we want mm -hmm. and, and we want to have it and we want you to move to the side. And so we're always, all of us, and I'm sure you've had many of these experiences too, where you have to advocate for yourself all the time. And... And so it's taken a minute. <laughs> it's taken a minute to find somebody um, like Justin. And, and really, he found me because he came to me and he said, you know, I've always heard this story about this TV series that your father created that he was rejected for, um, that he created and had a treatment. Is that true? And I said, um, oh, yeah, it's definitely true. And I, and I have the treatment. And he was like, he was like, oh my gosh, can I see it? <laughs> and and look, I, I've been saying this and it's really true. It took Justin being Justin and you know know him yeah. um, for this to happen. And what I mean by that is, is yes, it took him having clout in the film industry. But what I mean even more is that it took him being a person of good character, of, be, of being a good collaborator, of being a person of integrity, um, willing to partner with me um, to get this done. And without those components, it might not have happened. Because, you know, he, he really did everything he said he was going to do. He said, I don't want to make this show unless we do it right. Tell it the way we want to tell it, unless it represents your father, unless it makes sense as part of the legacy, and that it's a quality piece of of production entertainment and I was so grateful for that <laughs> I mean you know the feeling right like aren't you so grateful when somebody like really treats you um, like a human being absolutely yeah I mean the last project that I that I just did Lovecraft Country yeah congrats thank you our executive producer creator it's also different having like a female on your side a creative on your yeah. side um, yeah. But she made it a point to dedicate one entire episode to give the background story of a supporting character. Like, who does that? No one does that. Let's right. set it in Korea. Let's, let's, let's make it authentic as possible. Most of the language is in Korean. There will be subtitles. Mm. You know, let's spend the money on the sets, on the dialect coach, on getting the right actors, um, and, like, really putting this piece together. And it was... I've never experienced anything like it no, on a mm. film or a TV show, like to have the amount of support that I had. Um, and like you said, it's integrity, but also like a collaboration, you know, having open mm. conversations, digging really deep to what this character is. Like there was layers upon layers of like who this character was. It was the most complicated thing I've ever done. You know? Yeah. Well, tell, well, tell me about that. What drew you to, to it? What drew you to the role and the character and all that? So, so Gia is a Kamiho, and a Kamiho is a nine-tailed fox spirit, and they mm -hmm. and take the form of a beautiful woman, and they take the souls of a hundred men. In our story, um, Gia, the young girl, mm -hmm. is sexually assaulted by her stepfather. Her mother mm -hmm. finds out. She summons the Kamiho to come into her daughter's body. So her daughter's memories are totally erased. She then has to have take the souls of a hundred men in order to be reincarnated, reincarnated back into her daughter before the traumatic experiences. So she wouldn't have to live with this trauma. Mm -hmm. um, of course, nothing goes according to plan, but what drew me to this character was like, first of all, it's in Korean. I've never had that opportunity before to speak Korean um, in a film, in a project. Mm -hmm. And what really drew me to this project was that Misha wasn't afraid to show the horrors of war. Not only the horrors of like how people of color are treated in a segregated America in the 1950s, mm -hmm. um, which is horrific in its own right, but the horrors of the Korean War and the civil war that ensued. What's monstrous? Like, is it this nine-tailed fox spirit, like monster that mm -hmm. killed people or people during war are right. just monstrous? So that was kind of like the parallel theme throughout the entire show. And it really... It really brought up a lot of questions and feelings that I haven't um, ever experienced before reading a script. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, and to your point before, like having that support, 
you know, I think this is why it's so important for there to be people of our, of our same background, people of our same culture involved in these industries behind the camera as well as in front of the camera. It's like to have someone who can really understand um, on, a, on a certain level, you know, what you're going through, what your character is supposed to be going through, all of those sorts of things and have a deeper appreciation for it is so meaningful. Yeah. And it really sounds like your show, it's funny, like when you talk about the parallels, it's the same, it's the same with Warrior. Like when I, I saw you know, the first it, episode, you guys address it right <laughs> away, like the violence towards like Chinese migrant workers and like yeah. the hatred towards them. And it's real. That's the horrors of that time. Like it's just, it's weaving historical facts and events into a television show like that's highly stylized and which is fantastic to watch yeah but it's still honoring those stories yeah no totally and and same with lovecraft country it's highly stylized it's <laughs> it's you know got all of this supernatural um elements to it and yet the things we're talking about are always the same right human okay. interaction um human relationship how we treat one another, yeah. um, how we put agendas before humans and, mm -hmm. you know, all of these sorts of things. And, and that's why I think shows like ours are, are so important. Very similar. Yeah. 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 But also so important. I mean, did you watch the Emmys and you were like, there's not a lot of Asian. No, I don't even, I don't, I have to look right now. I don't even know Sandra was uh, nominated. I think she was actually, but I think yeah. she was the only one and it's so disheartening. Yeah. Because we still have such a long way to go, you know. It's been yeah. 1970, and then you said early 2000s. You, were, you know, and it's like all this time has passed, and yet, do you see that there has been much progress? Like truly, you know, it's interesting. But um, I was I was just talking to somebody today, and people were saying, you know, talking about the parallels with Warrior to current day events, and how there's all this anti Asian sentiment that's come about because of the coronavirus and there's so much of that in our show and then there's all of these factions that are pitted against one each other and the politicians are wanting a certain thing and wanting to demonize certain groups of people and all this sort of stuff and and I was saying it's it's kind of disheartening that we have not learned these lessons yet and 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 things have yes have they changed a little bit yes Am I happy that right now, because of everything's going on, there is more of a conversation that we're getting to have? Yes. Mm -hmm. But when I think about our show, which took place um, historically more than 100 years ago, um, um, have we made much progress? Not really, you know? Um, and I just hope and pray that the unrest of these times can can really start to turn the tide in a meaningful way mm -hmm. you know we are much more connected now than we ever were because of technology because we all have the ability to you know be in touch and in tune hopefully this makes our world smaller and makes people and stories like yours and stories like ours help people to have a window into different culture but same humanity yeah, and like unique experiences, but similar right. experiences. Right, right. And so your your show and my show, they both they both go back in time. I'm curious, um, what is that like? What was that like for you as an actress to get to like go back in time? I've never done a period piece before. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've done like fantasy or like you know fairy tale or comic book, and so to have this place during the Korean War in 1949 the 1950s, it was really special. I mean, I've never, I was so amazed at the amount of attention to detail that all the department mm. heads had. You know, everyone yeah. from costumes to props to, um, uh, to locations to everything. Like people, when you work with people who care about their job and the quality of work that they put out, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of, it's mind blowing. And when I saw the opening to your show, you know, being from San Francisco, I was like, oh my God, that's, that looks like it's right near Chinatown. You know, <laughs> that famous photo is, and I was like, that's insane. Where did you guys shoot that? In South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> no way. 
Yeah. They did a great job making it look like, you know, 19th century San Francisco. Because I've oh, seen photos, yeah. you know, like. I know. Up. Well, you should have seen, you should have seen um, the set was really phenomenal. And Cape Town, South Africa, just from a, a even just a, a feel of the place. Um, and, and it, you know, and it, it and the ocean, you do have a harbor there, you do have the ocean, you do have a little bit more of an arid climate like California. It felt very similar, um, but, and our sets were phenomenal. It was this huge, like, multi-block set of Chinatown. It was, it was so really awesome. beautiful. I was, like, immediately blown away, and it's rare that you see, like, Asian people in, like, horse and carriages and wagons, you know what I mean? And it's so cool. I want to see more of yeah. it. You said it perfectly, like, um, working with people who care. Mm -hmm. And I, I know in the 20 years that I've been doing this, that I've been running my, looking after my father's legacy, um, you know, I doubted myself all the time. And this goes back to like, you know, being a young actress, being all those things. I doubted myself all the time. And I thought, oh, this person works in this industry. This person has been doing this a long time. This person runs a big company. They know so much more than I do. What do I know? And then, it took me several years, but I started to realize that just caring, just the fact that I care, mm -hmm. that I care to try and do a good job, that I care to understand what's going on and to learn something new, puts you immediately at the top of, yep. yeah. of everything. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who've been on top who don't give a shit, and it shows. Excuse my <laughs> but it shows. And that's all the work is like, no one wants to watch this, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a huge difference and it's totally. game changing and it was only until recently i was like this is the kind of you know once you get a taste of something that you're like wow you pour you like truly pour your heart and soul and everyone's on the same page it's rare that that happens but now that i have a taste of it from this last show like moving forward i don't want to do crap i want to <laughs> tell stories that are meaningful yeah. to me you know like i feel like now is the moment and um, I mean, I can't talk too much about it, but I was, I was, I wanted to make a story of what it was like to grow up as a Korean American and to be in an interracial relationship, and we sold the show. So I think, I think people are really, you know, there's a real appetite for different perspectives and different point of views, and it's about damn time. Like it, you know, and we're not, again, we're not there yet. They're not like knocking down the doors and making tons of stuff, but I, I do think that. There's like a little, there's like a crack in the window and there's a way in and it's like, well, we're going in, you know? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something else. Diversity is life. Like y y you don't have um, a thriving anything ecosystem without diversity. Oh, Bi biodiversity is health. It's life. And, and, you know, we're having to learn these lessons the hard way, but hopefully we're learning the lessons. I think so. Yeah. And you mentioned that you're running your um, your father's foundation. Yes. Can you speak more about that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, there are many things that I'm involved in. Um, I, I run the Bruce Lee Foundation, which is a public charity. Um, we do uh, museum exhibits. We do camps for kids. Um, we, we have in the past also done scholarships, and we scholarship kids into our camps as well. Mm -hmm. um, I also run the, the Bruce Lee Family Companies, which there's the production side of that business, and then there's the licensing side of that business. So, so um, I'm very immersed in Bruce Lee. I'm, oh, gene wow. I'm genetically immersed in Bruce Lee. <laughs> wow. But, you know, but for me, and I say this all the time, it's not – it, it, for me, it wasn't about like, oh, this seems like a lucrative business or, oh, this seems like something to do. It was because I have been so deeply moved and inspired and healed by my father's own life, by his words, um, his philosophies, mm -hmm. that I want people to know him. I want people to continue to know him and I want them to know him in this deeper way. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, through the show, I think they get to know him as a true creative mm -hmm. with, a, with stories to tell. And then through his words, they get to know him as the true philosopher that he was. Because he really he wasn't just an armchair philosopher. Like, he was, 
He lived by his words. And so for me, it, it's my desire to get that out into the world and get that out into the world and to encourage people to open their minds, to work on themselves, to connect with one another and all the things that he was so, so good at doing. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm working on. It's <laughs> really incredible. And then what about, I mean, I can understand like it's such a heavy responsibility to make sure that that messaging is right, to make sure that, you know, the family name is not taken advantage of. What are your hopes for your daughter? Whew. Look, my father um, always said, um, man, the creating individual, is more important than any system or organization. And so for me, my daughter is more important to me than anything. And my goal for her is for her to live the most fulfilling and joyful life that she can. And it has no... Um, it has no boundaries on it. So I was really fortunate that my mother uh, said it supported me whatever I wanted to do um, and never said, you have to run this business and never said, you have to follow in your father's footsteps or anything like that, for which I was so grateful. Um, and and the same holds true for me and, and my daughter. Like I um, just want her to thrive and find herself. And really, you know, in the words of my father's own philosophy, which are about self-actualization is, you're not looking to be like anyone else. In fact, what you're really striving to be is the most like yourself that you can be. Because all of us, and I'm sure you know, we're all humans. We're all of us are like, I don't know, who am I? What do I really want? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? And, and to ask those great questions and, and pull out those, you know, uh, 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 those deep answers and heal those deep wounds and all that sort of thing is, is, is really important. I, I tell her all the time, cause like, she'll get all stressed out about it her grades or where she's going to go to college and all this kind of stuff. And, and I'll say, you know what? It doesn't matter where you go to college. What matters is that you're happy, that you enjoy your life. And oh, man, that's I wish for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, and by the way, that's hard. That's hard to do, you know, <laughs> but that's my wish for everyone, for, for you, for, for everyone. I mean, that's, that was the big talking point, um, sticking point for your TED Talk. So anyone who's watching this, I hope you check that out because it was really insightful. Oh, True. It was really insightful. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. Well, do, thank you still, you. do you still carry on with the martial arts? Because I love, I mean, I grew up doing Taekwondo. I wasn't very good right. at it, but <laughs> I felt like the diligence of that helped me with some action roles. But I'm so curious. Do you still practice? Do you still... Not as much as I used to, but every now and again. For, I was very much into it for a while, and now, um, you know, I, I do it more as a form of exercise than anything yeah. else. But, I mean, I'm curious for you, like, what did you find, other than it helping you with roles, like, what was your experience of training? Like, what did it give you as a human being? Well, training, it's the diligence. It's the um, it's same thing as studying. It's like you... Not, not so much the repetition, but really giving it 100% and not giving up when it gets hard or when your body aches. You know, um, it's, it's kind of, it's so liberating because in, and I didn't, I was never classically trained in theater. I studied, I have a bachelor degree in economics and business. So, you know, I didn't have like formal theater training of like movement. And, you know, although I take classes, it's like, I, I felt like for me, the, the roles with a lot of physicality in martial arts, like that's what it taught me. It taught me mm -hmm. the physical presence of not only just on camera, but in real life. Like, you know, like, yeah. like how you move, how, what's powerful, what's not. Like, you know, it's, it's really interesting, but it was kind of eye-opening because it's, it's such, so fun to do as well, you know? Yeah, totally. um, <laughs> but also having that under your belt, it's just, it's a whole other thing to be able to play with, physicality. Yeah. And again, it's so different from actual fighting. And this is something, you know, that I learned from, from your father. It's like certain styles of martial arts. It's like, it's like one, two, stop. And it's kind of like, 
the same with bad action movies. It's like mm. there's a couple moves and then a pose, you know, and it's right. it's not as fluid, but mm. you know, but now that I take boxing and whatnot, that my coach was like, you keep posing. <laughs> like I'll take a bunch of pose. You know, <laughs> to look, it's I'm just like breaking bad habits. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it is it is really fun. Oh, that's and it's amazing. pretty powerful to be able to do your own stunts and, and be proud of that. And Totally, totally. I've always loved it. And for me, it just it just built up my inner strength, really. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I really recommend it to, to everyone for that purpose. Like it gives you confidence and determination and makes you really understand how to be in your body, I think. Mm-hmm. So what's the big dream? Where's Jamie Chung going? <laughs> Dream seriously, and I hope people enjoy it. Was was episode one hundred and six for Lovecraft? Like I, I feel mm. fulfilled that I was able to tell that story because it was it was so much, and there were so many levels. And it's I don't I don't know if I'll ever get a role like that again. I think I'm okay with that. But the dream is to continue to tell stories that personally matter to me. Because I know that there's an audience for that. I know this because I have, you know, my friends and family or random people all across the world come up to me and say, like, thank you for the representation. Thank you for representing us. Thank you for your stories. Thank you for, um, you know, your your awareness to social issues. Like, it's Mm -hmm. so important to stay involved. And I think, you know, with everything that's going on currently, if you don't have an opinion about politics, well, I mean, you know, what are you doing? You know? And for the people who are like, I don't really care about social issues, you know, that's like kind of like a, a thing people like to say. And it's like, but we live in a society together. Like this is a republic. It's like, it's we the people. Like how can you not care about human issues? Right, right. As a human. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the dream. What about you? Yeah, I mean, look, I am a- attempting to just uh, continue to put as much nourishing goodness and help and support and awareness out into the world as I can, whether that's through my father and his legacy, whether that's through my own works and things that I do. And, you know, I think one of the things that's so powerful about media is that everybody, you know, it, it, it gets seen by so many people. I just, whether it's through entertainment, whether it's through, you know, uh, talks and, and, and um, writing, I have a book actually that I, that I just wrote. Congratulations. Thank you. But it's called, book. it's called uh, Be Water My Friend. Oh, I saw, I mean, by the way, the documentary. Oh, oh good. Really spoke to me. It was <laughs> Oh, thank you. Bao did, Bao Win, the director, the filmmaker, really did an amazing job. It was his vision. I just, I just was a part, I just was there to, you know, be interviewed and lend, and lend my voice to it. But, um, but it was, it was all him and he did such a phenomenal job and, and had such a beautiful way of delivering the story. My um, only complaint is that it wasn't long enough. After <laughs> it ended, I just want, I wanted more. Like I yeah. wanted, I wanted more. You know, it it was, it was really touching to watch. And so, you know, I just, whether, you know, I just want to keep putting these things out into the world. I just want to keep connecting us as humans and, 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 and telling these stories and putting out these words that speak to our shared experience. You know, you've probably heard this quote, but, but someone was asking like, oh, well, do you think of yourself as Chinese or do you think of yourself as North American or how do you like to think of yourself? And he said, you know how I like to think of myself as a human being? And he said, because, you know, under the sky, we are one family. And, you know, our differences are our embellishments. They make us in unique individuals, but, but beyond the that all of that we are one humanity and we need to to learn to love and connect and support one another that is well said and i must say i i I do hope you continue your work because it's touched me and my family um in a positive way so that is a great way to end an interview (laughs) 